Hello everyone and welcome to Geek Academy channel. My name is Igor and we are continuing to analyze from season 1 today episode 9. One of my personal favorites. So many interesting things, so many interesting clues and I can't wait to share with you everything that I found a lot of theories, a lot of interesting questions and before we begin as usual I want to say thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. You're making also one-time donations here in YouTube. This is amazing. This is like the loudest applause a YouTuber can get. I appreciate it so much, so so much and I will do everything in my power to never disappoint. So episode 9 let's begin of course my channel is only in the beginning and i'm trying different things hoping that some of them at least you will like and i told many times that i want to build here a small community of people who enjoy that kind of tv shows you know that really require a deep dive in them and one of the things that came into my mind i want to start every video with a couple of your comments not too many because you didn't come here for this but i want to give you also some voice voice with a small accent but still anyway one of the uh, comments that i really enjoyed by uh, vladimir lemika i shouldn't be surprised that somebody with my accent attracts people with the name vladimir another question to think about regarding the talismans why were there so many talismans in that one enclosure that boyd found i'm thinking that perhaps that enclosure was once used to trap or imprison some evil being this could be an important piece in the story of this whole from place now, I also think this is an interesting idea because we know there is something that lives underground. I think this is the boogeyman that Ethan is talking about, the main evil guy, the big boss, and he's living under the ground and he's trapped there. And probably the boy in white or whatever it is, is holding him here in this place and everybody who gets in also gets to be stuck. Anyway, we're gonna move forward. Another comment that I just wanted to read for you because I laughed my ass off when I read it. The stone structure in the peak where Boyd found the goat looks like an old graveyard to me, but I think we'd have seen something like that if it were the case. Now, crazy theory, bear with me. Father Cat Tree phonetically sounds like Father Cat Tree. And we've seen that the town has dogs, but no cats. And that's crazy unnatural, I agree here. I'm saying that Father Cat Tree is actually a god of cats. Treating the people like the personal house cats while the monsters are feral cats, always calling to the indoors cats to come play with them. So yeah, aliens. <laughs> So this is just my way of telling you I enjoy your comments, I enjoy reading them, whether you make me laugh or you tell me something interesting or you're just saying thank you. Whatever it is, this is basically like a boost of motivation for me, so please keep writing. And let's begin with the episode. And of course, of course, we're gonna start with the dream. Whatever it is, if it's a dream or basically something else, maybe a deja vu, maybe a vision. But what I really enjoyed about this dream is that the episode doesn't start with the dream. We have a couple of scenes that are happening in real time with real characters. And then suddenly the next scene is Tabitha here. There's absolutely no feeling that it's a dream because usually those kind of sequences in every TV show, they are in the beginning of the beginning. Like this is the first scene you're gonna see in the episode and then somebody wakes up and you come back to reality. Here, no, they made it different, which makes us even more believe that this is not a simple dream. Obviously, of course. And when Tabitha is climbing the stairs up, she suddenly, without no warning at all, she's inside a lighthouse and she keeps hearing a phone call and also a sound that can be either a ship or a lighthouse. And since we're talking about uh, from, probably it's a lighthouse and she's inside of it. And we can see that she also experiencing her being in a couple of places simultaneously. That was the weirdest part for me. And since we have those talismans that kind of look like the same person is basically maybe having one head and two bodies, maybe there is something here also and you can be simultaneously in two different places or in two different realities. And 
while I'm talking to you about this, I understand, duh, of course, we have seen that already in the end of season 2, when Randall, Julie and Mariel were inside of one place where Boyd saved them, they were like trapped in this some kind of a dungeon or whatever, and simultaneously they were also in their houses in Fromville. So of course you can be in two places simultaneously, whether it's your spirit, whether it's something else, but it happens here. And this is something we see here in the same vision. We see Tabitha being simultaneously in Fromville and in her house and also she's in the lighthouse. So we're moving forward and we can see this is a weird camera movement for me. Why it was made like that? It basically a really jerky move to the left. I myself not a professional operator, I'm a video editor, but I get to work with a lot of uh, operators and it doesn't sound like something unintentional. And even if it was, during the editing you usually remove those kind of parts, but here it's very blurry and it looks like the creators wanted to show us that this is Fromville, you recognize the flag, but they didn't want us to see some details here that probably are very crucial and this is why it's very blurry. I try to understand what it is, I cannot see here anything, but I cannot explain this jerky movement because it's really weird to see this in this specific moment and why it wasn't removed in editing or why it was even done in the first place i have no other explanation than what i told you right now and we're moving forward and you can see that tabitha is basically she's next to the post office we can recognize the place and it feels like this is something that happened to her just in the previous episode we talked about abby being in this uh, city in this fromville and she's basically experiencing some kind of a deja vu she's thinking that she has been in this place she maybe dreamt it already and right now we're seeing a, a dream where Tabitha is inside this place. Maybe it's a dream she also had before she got to from it. I know there's a lot of maybes, there's a lot of theories here, probably you have one of your own, but bear with me, because now we can see that in the lighthouse there are Ethan's toys. We can see it's Norman and the other guy, we don't know his name. There is this ball and there is a card, playing card once again. I told you I'm not a big fan of the tarot card theory and I want to make myself clear, the guy who invented this theory is a f***ing genius, okay, he's amazing. I just don't want it to become true, okay, but the job that was made there is astonishing. I would give this guy a medal if I could. So there is no disrespect to the theory and especially not to uh, the person who thought about it, but just I myself not a big fan of it. But obviously there is something related to cards we've seen cards next to megan when she was killed you know the small girl in episode one we've seen it here in the lighthouse obviously everything here has a purpose and has a meaning we've seen it many many times on the background it is important and since norman is here and he's just lying on the ground lying here on the stairs Ethan is here and he's probably living here. We've seen this when I analyzed episodes 1 and 2. When Ethan was saved from the truck after the car crash, the only thing he had in his hands is Norman and the other monster thingy, whatever it is. So this is like the most important toys to Ethan and he's carrying it with him everywhere. And we're moving forward, we can see here uh, some book also, some kind of a truck with the word dump on it, I cannot connect it to anything, maybe there is something we've seen already in Fromville, but what is more interesting for me here is basically we can see an ambulance and I'm immediately starting to think about season 3, you know, the trailer we have seen with the ambulance arriving to the city, maybe this is some kind of a kid's game, this is one of the theories that I really enjoy because we have the Chrominocle story, we have Ethan talking about, this is a story you need to basically create like a puzzle from all the Victor's drawing, there is a lot of similarities between Chrominocle and the story we are experiencing here and now we can see Ambulance here and maybe the card, maybe Norman, maybe everything here in the lighthouse some kind of creates reality for Fromville and other places in this blocked area whatever it is now this is not my find and i usually try to say it sometimes i can say this is something i discovered and maybe somebody did before me when i say this i don't try to steal your idea it just basically happens that we both thought about it i just thought about it after you but if i did find it on somebody else's channel or in somebody's comments in facebook or whatever i always try to give credit but this battle that we see here this is actually the same or it just looks the same like the battle that Boyd 
took from the bottle tree in the end of this episode. Which can be weird, especially if you don't subscribe to any time travel theory. So what is Tabitha experiencing here during this dream? Is it a vision of future? Is it a vague memory of the past? If it's a past, then once again there is a time travel. If it's a future, it means that Matthew's family is gonna relocate to the lighthouse and they're gonna live there. Or it's just once again some kind of a dream and I'm just, you know, doing uh, too much thinking here and there's probably a way simpler explanation for that but we're gonna move forward once again the way tabitha here is uh, behaving it's very natural it's very routine like she just basically did it many many times she's like can anybody get that you know like the bottle it feels like she's been here for a long time and once again of course she's holding a book and there are the years I'm not gonna tell you anything new, those years were being analyzed by I think every YouTuber out there or everyone who's doing some kind of analysis of from and there are too many ideas. What's interesting for me is the book, first of all, it looks like something that can be on the back cover of Chrominocle, but not exactly sure, you know, like look at the flight of the Chrominocle, the design, the symbolism, the color grade looks very similar to this one, but not exactly. So I cannot say it for sure, but it feels like a chrominocle and it also sounds logical that this book would be the one that Ethan will take with him to the lighthouse. And once again, the years. I obviously, like anyone else, try to find some connection between those years, try to analyze them. The only thing that was sounding to me a little bit logical was of course American history. We discussed this already, I put it on my board, but it's not only American history, we have a lot of culture references in this show. But you know, when you start to analyze history, the year 1506 uh, can be many, many, many different interesting uh, situations and history events. But you know, like if we're talking about America's exploration, so yeah, Columbus's death, this is what happened there. And if you look at 1609, this is the Hudson voyage. You know, like the English explorer, Henry Hudson, he discovered New York and Hudson River. He didn't discover New York, he discovered the Hudson River and this is why it's called Hudson River. But when you move forward, there's less and less events like that, especially when you talk about, you know, like uh, 1978 or 1931, which can be also very interesting moments in history, like Great Depression maybe in United States. I don't remember if it's exactly 1931 or somewhere close or somewhere not so close, but you can always find some kind of events and it does feel to me like I'm doing too much here in this moment. I just hope that the explanation to those numbers will be better than it was in Lost with the numbers of, uh, you know, like you go winning the lottery and you need to put those numbers after every one hour or every two hours. I can also see those numbers being years or being a red herring here. Like, it looks like years, but maybe it's something completely else. And then Tabitha sees Jim. Jim is basically upside down. He is unconscious. It kind of connects to the car crash in the beginning of the season. And even in this moment, Tabitha is experiencing the car crash again. And Jim is screaming his lungs out. And we once again hearing this sound that, in my opinion, obviously is a lighthouse. So when she's experiencing this accident, we can see that Jim is basically trying to grab the flashlight. It feels very specific to me, like this is something that you usually don't dream unless there is a meaning to it. Obviously you don't put it in the script if there is no meaning to it. So maybe it's also something that's yet to happen, that's gonna happen in the future. It feels to me that this dream is a vision for things to come and not something that already happened. And this is the weirdest part, as I told you, Tabitha here is experiencing two different realities at the same time. She's basically like, ah, ah, I'm in a trance or something like that. So she's seeing the car accident while she's dreaming about a lighthouse and her husband being upside down, while she's dreaming, while she's basically sleeping in Fromville. This is too much. This is like already a Russian doll. And this is obviously not a simple dream. This is either a vision for future things to come or as I told you this is something that happened with Tabitha before and she just forgot about it. I myself personally more enjoy the idea of future. I don't really subscribe to the theory of you know Tabitha being Victor's sister or something like this. The age difference is way too big for this or she's been his mom or whatever and somehow she traveled and forgot. I'm not a big fan of this theory 
but I do enjoy everything related to time travel. I don't want this show to become about time travel only, you know, like put it in focus and it only about time travel and this is the main idea of it. But if it's added here somehow through the magic of this place, I'm probably gonna enjoy it a lot. Anyway, as I told you, the accident, this is the same accident, but it made it like really, really blurry. I don't know what was the meaning of it. Why not to show it just like it happened? You would just wanted to show that this is a dream or maybe this is something that never really happened. I don't know, just throwing again some crazy ideas out there. And Tabitha is waking up, we understand that this is just a dream and obviously it's not. And when we move forward, we can see that uh, Boyd and Sarah, they are walking through the forest and they found this place where uh, Boyd found all those talismans. It looks like a very ancient structure. We talked about, you know, all those stones that are being like uh, put in the circle or just laying around. It feels a lot like a stone age and maybe this is something that was made here also thousands of years ago because it doesn't feel like something that was built even in the early 1000s. And when we move forward, one of the main themes of this episode is losing hope and we can see this guy uh, basically killed himself. I forgot his name already and I watched the episode about 10 minutes ago. And this is a little bit of criticism, once again, to creators. I allow myself to do this. I'm a big fan of the show, but it doesn't mean that everything is perfect. And I think just like with the creepy mustache Mario guy, you know, the Virgin Mario, uh, with this guy, if we would have seen him at least a couple of times in previous episodes, in episode two, three, four, you know, just like this girl that uh, Jay took her bicycle from her and she had a couple of lines and there are other people that are basically were saying like, yes, but you know, they got a line. They're not an extra already. They have a beat. This is how it's called in the industry. So you could have give this guy a couple of lines too. And then his death would have a lot of more weight for the viewers because we would feel like we at least know him a little bit. And here he's just, okay, another dead guy. This is a show with a lot of dead people, especially after the massacre in episode 7, doesn't feel like something very, very heavy. And we can see that Donna is also losing her hope. We can see that a lot of people are gonna lose hope. Even Fatima here, when she speaks to Elise, she's like, how can we come back home? Even if we come back home, this is not gonna be the same person who got to this place. We cannot be that innocent. We cannot live the normal life once you experience something like this. Obviously, you're gonna have a trauma and I don't know how much money you need for psychiatrists to actually heal yourself from this, but probably not enough. So this question, I don't understand how I didn't ask it before. Probably you did many times. Where's the model? Did it get tired of being a model and it just stood up and left? We can see there was a pool, but I don't see too much space for the model. Was the lighthouse maybe a model before that? You know, sometimes there is a practice like that. You take an old a building, you renovate it and you make an Airbnb of it or something like this. But once again, it's a little bit far from the colony house. And especially if this is the pool of the motel, it's kind of a long walk from colony house to here. So yeah, either the model was never there and it's really some stupid simulation where somebody was like, you know, when I was young, we were building maps on Age of Empires and you would put like uh, people from different periods fighting against each other, you know, like cannons against like people from Stone Age. This feels a little bit like it. Or if we come back to Victor's drawings and this building that's burning, big building that's burning, Maybe there was a model, but it was completely burned to the ground. It would probably leave some kind of remains, which I don't see here. But also this, whatever you call it, is the truck or a minibus. It also looked a little bit burnt. Once again, not an expert, never been a firefighter in my life, but usually, you know, it's either very, very old or it experienced some kind of fire. So we talked about this already, I think in a previous episode or the one before, about the book that Kenny and Christy are reading, uh, the narrative of the adventures about uh, Arthur Gordon Pym, or is it called a little bit different? Now, why I want to come back to it? Because one thing I forgot to tell you here is that if you're going to look at the cover, there is a lighthouse on this cover. And one of the reasons it took me a lot of time to actually understand that this is the book about Gordon Pym is because when I looked for covers with the lighthouse or any other covers in Google or in Goodreads, I didn't find any cover with this book and a lighthouse. 
So, the logical conclusion here, it's not just a book that was laying there in the director's room or the director's trailer and they needed a book and they were like, hey, Kenny, take this book, you know, act with this one. No, they actually made a cover, a specific cover with a theme very close to Fromville Lighthouse with the name of this book it was done on purpose so this book has to have a meaning and we move forward and the voices that were talking to sarah were right they told her if she's not gonna kill ethan nathan is gonna die and this is basically what happened as soon as she wasn't able to kill ethan nathan died like two seconds after but they were right just you know kind of because they told her like that he would die that everyone would die and as we know everyone didn't die even though they were kind of close you know in episode 7 so they're not exactly 100 percent correct they know this cycle of events they know what's gonna happen they know the story but this story once again can be influenced by people and people can save themselves you can obviously argue here that maybe everyone is gonna die but i don't think this is one of those shows then everybody's gonna die even ethan so yeah this is not the the best uh, screenshot I could find for Sarah here. Apologies to the actress. And we also learned here something new about Nathan. It's not exactly new, but it just completes the narrative that we had already in mind, that Nathan basically left everything and he saved Sarah probably from an abusive relationship. Uh, she's saying here to Boy that Nathan was a person who always put everybody else before him, like in the priority, everybody else, especially his sisters. And only after he helped everyone he can help himself, which he didn't. Anyway, let's move forward and we can hear here Ethan saying what we know already. You need to take Victor's drawing and start putting them together to create a story. They all fit together and tell a story. It's an adventure. The boy is in a quest. He's in some kind of an escape room in his idea. So let's look at those images and see if we can already recognize something. We can see a broken window here, maybe it's blood, I don't know what is this red thing, uh, but it feels like this black, like goo or smoke, whatever it is, here you can see the black. Uh, we saw it many times that when Victor is drawing the monsters or something evil, he's using this black color, so maybe it's like broken window and the monsters can get inside or other than monsters, something else. Let's move to the next image, we can see here some kind of a building, a guy here in the orange jumpsuit looks like it, somebody here is laying, either dead or just, I don't know, resting, and it feels like a flood, like a lot of water, you can see that the house is drowning with the trees. So this is something we haven't seen, but it's something that's supposed to happen, since we know already that everything happens here in some sort of a cycle. And if this event happened once, it's gonna happen again. Now this house is just with some sad smileys and some surprise smileys. And there is also a car crash here in the, you know, like a yellow car. Don't know what it is, but it's not a car crash we have seen in episode one it's also not the same car crash of the two cars that were here before you know in victor's uh, time period it's just one car there is basically something happened to it another car crash also something we haven't seen yet and probably gonna see and we see here once again the globe you remember we already uh, saw victor's image of all those houses you know being like in the globe and uh, the trees are basically like creating this dome around them while they are connected to something evil where the caves are, where the monsters lived. So once again, we can see here those caves. We see the houses. I don't know if exactly Fromville or maybe just everything. And also the blue here, is it a sky or is it water? Now, usually you would think it's a sky, but then what's with the white here and the black line? why like you run off the blue color of the blue charcoal 
also maybe it's like a flood another reference to this whole place is being flooded at some point i don't know exactly just an idea but maybe somebody from the lake of tears is gonna cry so much it's probably gonna be jade and mrs lou is gonna be angry at him because he's never stops whining something here flood related is obviously you cannot miss it anyway this is i have no idea what it is it's a whirlwind we can also see a spider here. This is probably the same drawing that Ethan saw in episode 2 when he was uh, having a seizure and then he woke up and he has seen the spider coming down from the ceiling while somebody screamed and the lake of tears. We can see here tears, we can see here spider coming down from the ceiling. This is it. Here we can just see some houses, a lot of houses. I don't notice any details like crowds, monsters, dead people, houses, houses, uh, bugs and a gun probably victor's gun now here i have no idea what it is but it looks a little bit like spider legs you can see here my mouse is like i don't know it's just some color here maybe I, this is like a rorschach test you know you see whatever you want to see uh, but once again just sharing it here with you and this moment like we can see the boy in white is drawn like in those cartoons you know when you like flip them fast it turns into cartoon so boy in white here turning into cartoon, being drawn differently from others. Here we can see some house, greenhouse, drowning with blood, and we can see the tree stopping a car, a yellow car. Is this the same car that's uh, been in the accident, the one we've seen before? Like, let me scroll a little bit back. Is this this one? It looks very similar. Maybe it hit the tree. Maybe there was an accident. Maybe uh, unlike uh, the characters we've seen, somebody actually wasn't able to stop and they um had an accident with this tree so this moment is this a production glitch or this is another matrix glitch like look at the image that ethan is given to tabitha we can see somebody is dead and their head is being torn apart and obviously tabitha is not happy with her child holding this kind of image and she's like nah give it to me please and you can see this is a different image already this is an image of the massacre drawing sorry not an image this is more likely to me to be a production error, but maybe a glitch. Once again, something like we have seen already with Jasmine and the beginning of the uh, season when they were driving around the Fromville. I don't know. Anyway, the second theme of this episode, like the losing of hope, we can see some hope in other people. Like here, Tabitha and Ethan and Julie, they're talking about what they're gonna do when they kinda come back and they're gonna do amazing things. But Ethan is basically like, I wanna be happy just like here. And they're like, what are you talking about, Ethan? This is not a happy place. You're like, yeah, but home, we barely talk to each other. And here we actually speak to each other and we're playing games around the table. We never do that at home. So this is the mind of a child. He doesn't even think about the monsters and the, the imminent threat of death. He is basically enjoying finally being able to do something with his family. And this bug doesn't look to me like a spider. Spider legs, you usually draw them differently. So more bugs are coming up we've seen some cicadas in the end of season two we've seen some spiders probably even more bugs here yay bugs so when sarah and boy are reaching the bottle tree something happens to sarah as soon as boy tries to reach the bottle she's having a seizure it feels like she can hear them again but uh, the same way they affected her when she was trapped in father katri's uh, cellar and she felt the pain they were able to move the her body so she could draw the image for father Katri. here she's experiencing a lot of pain basically the tree or whatever controls the tree is telling them don't touch it please do not touch or you'll be fine uh, but still it didn't stop boyd and uh, we can see the basically like the sound of the bottles that are touching each other and there's like click click clickety clacky sound this is basically what bothers sarah here and she's having a seizure so we're gonna come back to it later a little bit another interesting theme of hope here donna is saying here because you got people's hope up you know like when they're building this uh, uh tower to reach uh, somebody with the radio signal and donna saying here to kenny you build people's hopes up as soon as they gonna understand this is not gonna work all hope is gonna be lost you bring people's hopes up and as soon as they understand nothing is gonna change you took the ground from under their legs and they're gonna feel lost they're not gonna feel motivated doing anything and then they give up and then they fucking die sounds to me like a formula 
when somebody was building this place, they probably used it. You give people hope. First, sorry, you put them in a very difficult situation. Like in Emily Dickinson's poem, hope is the thing with feathers and during the storms you have the strongest hope. So you build their hopes, you put them in a bad situation, you give them a lot of hope and then you take it away, you eat all of their hope and you kill them. That's it. Fromville for you. But this place is also a very healing place. Maybe it's because, you know, you need to heal to have hope again. And we have seen it already with Ethan, we've seen it with Ellis, them after serious physical injury, pretty much getting better like that, you know, like very, very fast. But it apparently doesn't heal only physical injuries. It's also healing some emotional injuries and some emotional problems. Like with Matthew's families, we know about them. They were ready to get a divorce. Their family was breaking apart and now they are actually together. Just like Julie says here, just like Eden said a couple of scenes before that. We've seen already how Jim and Tabitha were able, with the help of the magical music box, also, you know, like uh, cover some differences between them. We've seen them having some romantic moments there. It feels like their whole relationship is being healed by this place. By the horrors of this place, you bring up people's hope and it also helps them to be more united and help each other even more. But as soon as they're gonna lose the hope, this is where people start to turn on each other. And I was waiting for this moment, once again, flickering lights. This is one of my favorite topics, you know, the electricity. And once again, the cameraman with the director, they're basically showing it to us so we will never miss it. They're like, flickering lights. Please notice, this is something we want you to notice. Don't look away or you're gonna miss the flickering light. And the next scene after that, just like something we've seen already in episode 6 or 5, I forgot the numbers, when Jade was saved by the light, by the strong light, with the gym like uh, Galadriel revealing himself through this light. Also, this moment happened right after we have seen flickering lights twice and we've seen them again and she's talking to him about Mr. Fish and he understands this is probably Abby. It gives me a lot of questions. Is it really Abby the one that gave him the sign through the music box that he needs to go to adventure and now she's telling him I was wrong. Tell Mr. Fish and Loves that I was wrong and he needs to come back because I didn't know what kind of danger is waiting for him here. And she was once again right because we know Boyd is gonna get some worms in season 2, you know. And she's saying that this time it was a woman's voice, so which means that previous times this was a voice of men. Many men, apparently, if it's they, or at least two of them. This moment is something I start to notice more, especially after season 3 trailer. There's drawing of scarecrows and we've seen those freaky dolls, whatever they are in the trailer. Maybe this is the scarecrows that uh, Ethan saw here in the drawings. So, something we're gonna see in uh, Season 3 and something to remember here. Now, we come here to Star Wars Episode 2, The Attack of the Trees. Sara and Boyd are being attacked and it looks like they're being attacked by the trees. So, it feels like they've been moved. Okay, like they are gonna go sleep in one place and they're gonna discover themselves in a completely different place. So, did the trees move? or the ground with the trees moved here. Because we've seen in episode 2, like something tried to attack Boyd from under the ground. I think it's maybe some kind of the big bed that is living in this place. The one that controls the monsters, the one that doesn't let anyone else go out or it's the boy in white keeping this thing here inside and this is why no one can leave. Different explanations can be here, but it feels to me like once again, the reality was shifting, the reality was moving, the ground was moving here. Like Victor said, the trees are moving. Maybe it's not the trees, maybe it's this thing, this monster, this entity is moving underground and creates those kind of movements where like trees are actually moving. But it's not like trees, like in the Lord of the Rings, they decide to get up and attack Isengard. No, this is the ground that moves and trees move with them. Once again, just a theory, and as I told you, right after the flickering light scene, we have some lighthouse on. Once again, we hear the same sound that Tabitha was hearing in her dream, the sound of the lighthouse. And 
just like in Jade's Dream, the lighthouse. It's light saving our heroes. How does it do it? Like the first thing that comes to my mind, we see in here some different realities in one place. You can be twice in the same place in Fromville and around it, like it happened with uh, Julie and Randall, I told you about it already, and Mariel. And maybe those realities start to overlap at some point, just like the three routes that Jade is gonna see in the end of season two, when they overlap, the realities are overlapping, the timelines are overlapping, and the only way to bring, you know, like to closer to reality, to make it stable, is sometimes to use the lighthouse's powers wherever they are, you know, like put the light on this place when there is trouble, when there is something that needs to be fixed. This is just my idea. I once again, I never claim to know the answers. Nobody knows but the creators, but I think this idea is pretty valid. And you let me know what you think about it. Anyway, episode nine, as I told you, super excited, so much information. I cannot wait for episode 10. I'm, you know, like I'm following my schedule. I had a goal to finish all the 10 episodes in uh, August still and in September go through season 2. This is something I have to do with my main job, with my other responsibilities in life and I'm still happy I was able to do it and probably gonna be able to do it with season 2 already and I also move in an apartment soon. So I have no idea how I'm gonna do it. Anyway, thank you so much for your support, for writing comments, if you enjoy everything you see in this channel. And when I say everything, I mean everything, you know, like not just the TV show, but the way I do analysis. Do you enjoy my way of bringing information to you? Only if this is the case, then consider subscribing and hit that bell button. Anyway, I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye!